What's going on assassins? It's Dark Shot of the YouTube Assassin and this video is going to be a little longer than we're used to lately but it's something that a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about which is the recent games that have come out Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla talking about their main games and the DLCs and there's a lot of weird stuff when you compare the main games and the DLCs of each of these games. So when Origins came out, it actually was pretty huge. It was a lot larger than what we were used to as far as in Assassin's Creed game. There were obviously more regions, and of course it was open world. You could go anywhere at any time, and it did at first seem kind of overwhelming to a lot of people. Now, the reason it seemed overwhelming was because of the fact that you could just go anywhere at any time. But as long as you followed the story and as long as you understood that you didn't have to go directly to the next region immediately, that you could just kind of level up in, in one region, then move to the next, people kind of got the hang of it. Of course, some people complained that social stealth was gone. You could hide in hay bales. You could hide... Uh, sitting on a bench next to people and whatnot, but a lot of the classic assassinations that we were used to as far as like hiding on the bench and like stabbing somebody or any of those weird assassinations like they, they kept the normal ones the air assassinations and ledge, but it just it wasn't the same so Social stealth did seem broken in this game when it started off but you got used to it, you enjoyed the story, it was pretty amazing. Again, even though the world was huge and there were tons of things to do. Now, the DLCs were actually pretty successful. We had Sinai, which was the smaller one, and then we had the Valley of the Kings, which was the larger one. Both were smaller than the main campaign, but Sinai was the smallest of the two. Now, this one was only four regions, and basically, it's where Bayek really got the hidden ones, a.k.a. the assassins before they were known as assassins. This is where he got them off the ground. And it was a pretty wild story, honestly. You did go through these uh, four different regions. You did have a goal to accomplish. You did have enemies that you had to take out. You did make allies. You did have all kinds of just wild things going on it really wasn't a bad dlc the more interesting and larger one was the valley of the kings in which bayek went and handled a bunch of ancient pharaohs that seemed to have been coming back to life and he was trying to uncover what magic was bringing this up now the region of the valley of the kings was a lot bigger obviously than sinai not as big as egypt itself but it did have a, a nice chunk of land. It did have a lot to do. Back here, you could get to level 55 as long as you had the two DLCs. But the real star of the show here was the fact that you could travel to other maps. There were four other maps where it was basically the afterlife. Now, I don't know if it was some kind of chemically induced kind of afterlife or what this you know how this was done but it was pretty wild there were four different regions each region again had a bunch of wild stuff that you can do a bunch of like real mystery and just absolute new creatures and characters that you can battle and to me that was like really important because it wasn't the same old thing you were going into another region you were fighting other creatures other beasts you weren't just fighting the same bosses over and over again or the same characters over and over again. You would basically walk through this portal. It was almost magical. I don't know if maybe it could have been an Isu machine. And this is why I really would have loved to have seen Bayek get a sequel. But as you could see, these are guys that we haven't even seen in, in later Assassin's Creed. And they basically reused a lot of those character models for all the creatures that they had or all the enemies that they had in future creeds but this one is absolutely different and a lot of what you see here is entirely different it was just wild so now once you get past the gatekeepers there you continue on and an absolute whole different world would open up 
this is how you got to each one of the afterlife areas and they were just massive each one had its own theme each one had creatures that you didn't see before you saw those flying harpy things those things were pretty wild there's giant scorpions here and i really do think that it was either a dream state like he's in some sort of isu machine like he doesn't realize that he's in one and he believes he's in the afterlife but you know that's just speculation that's that's something for another video i believe but th to me it was just really cool that the way they did this and it did give you hours upon hours of extra entertainment and extra just things to do you could choose to do it all you could choose not to do it all it wasn't very grindy which was something that a lot of people had in odyssey where they felt getting to level 99 even with new game plus was an absolute chore in this game it just happened naturally you got to your top level which was 40 with ease in the main game and even if you got one of the dlcs if you got sinai or the hidden ones dlc that would get you i believe to level 45 and then this one the valley of the kings got you to level 55 even if you were still playing the main game and you got the two dlcs you could hit level 55 easily in the main game but this was just extra stuff for you to enjoy now we come to odyssey and odyssey was gorgeous i will not lie greece was absolutely phenomenal this game did have its controversy however because there was a lot of question like how could you choose either male or female and your magic machine could do anything it just can't tell boy from girl like that's kind of weird so that was a controversy and then of course now with the possibility of the third dlc for valhalla it's a lot of controversy in regards to who the actual eagle bearer was again that's a, a topic for another video but greece was enormous this was actually way larger than egypt it was larger than all the maps in assassin's creed origins put together just the main game now when we got the first dlc for this game the legacy of the hidden blade it was three chapters and the three chapters took place in this same area there was no extra map added it took place in greece itself and a lot of people really weren't upset honestly it was kind of cool it wasn't until we got the atlantis dlc that we actually got three new areas elysium the underworld and atlantis itself now each of these maps were equally as huge not as huge as greece but as huge as each other and there was plenty to do there were tons of things to like figure out nuances new things to discover ways to get extra levels and extra uh mastery points and whatnot there were all new weapons and gear to get and it was just gorgeous look at this this is elysium this is their version of heaven what they believed you would see if you were a good person and it's really awesome the undertone was obviously that this was an isu area this wasn't really heaven itself this is one of the isu areas as was the underworld as was uh atlantis oh look it's loki that's not loki that's supposed to be uh hades but anyway like every one of these areas was gorgeous it wasn't insanely huge but with it being so condensed there was a lot to do and there were a lot of new enemies to find and defeat this was amazing the underworld look at the detail here look at the ghost flying in the back and one not the dead absolutely incredible and again the creatures that you fought here were similar to the creatures that you fought kind of in elysium but they were different enough where it wasn't just a cut and paste job or uh, a job where they just you know took a character and changed the color scheme 
And it was a lot different than the characters that you fought in the main game. And speaking of cut and paste jobs, initially Odyssey did receive some blowback because people felt that it was a cut and paste of Origins. Which, I mean, in some cases, yeah. But in some cases, not. And we'll discuss that at length another time. Now, Atlantis, this area, absolutely gorgeous. I do think that this was the biggest area of the three. I do believe that the underworld was smaller than Elysium, and Elysium was still smaller than this. And again, it's a condensed space. It's a small map. But there's tons of stuff to do. There's tons of stuff to look at. It's absolutely gorgeous. And look at this. It, anybody else hold their breath whenever they jump really high in the game? That's kind of how I feel whenever I do these kind of jumps. But it was absolutely amazing. It matched the whole Atlantis theme. The story was absolutely incredible. And the whole premise was that all three of these areas were to prepare Cassandra or Alexios for being able to hold the staff that Layla would later find, that Layla would later use. But again, these areas were absolutely breathtaking. Plenty of story, plenty of little sub-quests, plenty of main quests to go on, or at least main quests in the DLC. And absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. There's no other way to describe it. Now, we get to Valhalla. Valhalla, it wasn't a bad game, if not for all the bugs. The bugs really kill it. But it's not a bad game overall. All right? It's, it's kind of an uninteresting time period to me, but many people love it. Now, this had several maps, which was really, honestly, pretty cool. Here's England, which is obviously the main area that you go to once you get done in uh, Norway. Norway was a lot smaller, but they also had other areas for you to travel to and explore. So Norway, again, is where you begin. And you can tell that these Vikings were just hardcore because look at the environment where they were living. And then they end up going over to England, you know? The area was absolutely phenomenal. You could actually freeze, which is something that we never saw in an Assassin's Creed game. You can go in these chilly, icy waters and literally freeze to death. And I thought that that was kind of cool because that's something we haven't seen. The area was large. There was a lot to explore. It was really mountainous, which kind of made travel kind of difficult unless you stayed on the paths. But who the heck stays on the path when they're playing something like this? You want to go out there, you want to explore. It's, it was really cool. Vinland was another area that was absolutely gorgeous. It was absolutely incredible. It was obviously the area where Connor Kenway had grown up in Assassin's Creed 3. This is actually the lands of his native tribes in the United States. And it's just really cool that you got to visit here. And not just that you get to visit here. You had all new gear that you could only wear here. You can't wear this gear anywhere else unless you transmog. And then it had these small Easter eggs like this right here. The wall that Desmond and his group actually enter in order to kind of hide from the Templars. And they discover Juno in there. Juno reveals her plot. So I thought that that was kind of cool. Then, of course, you know, you come over and you've got Ireland in the Wrath of the Druids DLC. Now, the Wrath of the Druids DLC was a smaller map. Not too bad, though. And it was actually pretty cool. Again, there was a lot to do here. For a condensed area, it had plenty of action. There was plenty of mysteries to look up and whatnot. We still had Odin runes that we could find here. And then it's got one of the most useful nuances, which is these trader outposts, because you can keep going back while you're playing your main game, while you're playing the other DLC, whatever. You come back here every hour and you just go and loot this chest and then you could trade it into Azar over here for XP and silver. And that's something that honestly I would have loved to see in the main game as well as 
in the France DLC because money is hard to come by. XP is not. But the money in the game is really tough to come by. That is also a problem that a lot of people had. For some reason, we didn't have this problem in Odyssey or in Origins. In this game, it was really tough. No, you know what? Odyssey, we did have some problem obtaining money, but it wasn't as bad as it is here. Like Valhalla, it's terrible. There's nothing you could do for more money, except that now, which, again, really cool. Now, France, a lot of people were upset with this DLC. And um, I could kind of see why. To me, this DLC, yeah, the map was a lot smaller than I think even Ireland. And I think that that was the very first turnoff to people who were playing the game. The other thing to me was that I, I kind of feel like France is completely gloomy. Like you come out here and... You know, you do see, like, beautiful areas and everything. But then you see, like, all this, like, wreckage and stuff. You see stuff just burning down. And I know that, hey, they were having a war and whatnot. And that's what all that stuff is. But it just seemed way too gloomy to me. You know? Like, it just... I don't know. Like, to me, this is, like, a normal sight. Just seeing things burn. Just seeing things wrecked. And, again... You could argue, Darkstrider, it was during a war. It's called the Siege of Paris, you know? And I guess, you know, I kind of have to give it leeway for that. But yeah, again, the map was real small. A lot of people were turned off by that. But again, it, it's not the size of your region. It's what you can do with it, wink, wink. But this region, it really did not have a lot to do, honestly. Once you get done with, you know, like rank four of the rebels, you don't want to continue. Like, there's no reason to continue once you get your full Reaper gear or whatever else you want to get. It, it just, it, it made no sense to carry on. Um, you know, the, the DLC and, and the problem with this DLC and even the uh, Ireland DLC is that most of the enemies are the same. The only differences in Ireland as opposed to the main game and this game was that you had the werewolves, you had the druids, and that was cool fighting them. But then you come here and it's just, it's the same thing. It's old hat. It's, they even use bandits as enemies here. You actually run into guys who have backpacks full of like grenades or bombs or whatever that they throw and you know it, it, you you stole that from the bandits there's no difference there's no change in anything you make way too much use of like those big guys those goliaths there and again it's just definitely cut and paste here's a bandit camp from the main game and most of these guys it's the same model the, there's differences here like these, uh, these guys right here, the, the larger guys, I know the druids kind of take their uh, body types and whatnot, but I don't know. I just felt like this was a lot different than Wrath of the Druids and a lot different than the France DLC. I almost feel like the France DLC was just filler content where it gave you a scenario and had you play it out it, it really didn't make brand new use of anything there were no new nuances i would have loved to see maybe another xp and uh silver farm kind of like ireland has with the trading posts i think that that would have been cool it would have been nice to see azar set up something in france once they were freed or something you see Retta over in France. You see Retta over in Ireland. So, I don't know. It, it kind of feels like France was rushed or a missed opportunity. It, there wasn't really a lot to do in France. And the story, I really wasn't interested in, honestly. Uh, it, I wouldn't say it was the bugs that turned me off, even though 
we did get a lot more bugs in the France DLC. I think I was just turned off by the story. I usually do not rush through a story. And I find myself doing that a lot with Valhalla, which, you know, I, I miss a lot of information just because I, I'm just trying to get through it. I don't know what that is. I don't know why that is. To me, this, this time period is just boring. The story is just boring. And there was way too many story arcs to even pay attention to what was going on. The formula for Origins was there was one story arc. He was just out to kill all his enemies. Same thing with Odyssey. The Eagle Bearer was out to kill all of the Order of the Ancients who were messing with the family. And that was that. But then we get to Valhalla. And yeah, you do have the Order of the Ancients. You do have this group of people that you have to kind of gather together. But then you're doing multiple things for all of them. And they have their own story arcs. And you're trying to convince them to join you. And then you have a final battle. And they all come together and whatnot. And... and Still, I just feel like there was way too much information and way much, way too much that had to be done in order to accomplish your goal. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Which game have you played? Which DLCs have you played? And what did you think if you have Valhalla of the France DLC? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like and subscribe. It helps this channel out an awful lot. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, take care, be good, stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you in the next one. And you know we're going to end this on a yayi. Yayi!